Big Nate Nailed It by Lincoln Purse. Nate, Gina has a complaint about your locker. It's a safety hazard. Every time he opens it, a tsunami of junk comes flying out. People get knocked over. Well, we can't have that. Open it, Nate. Let's have a look. Yes, let's. Okay, here. Hmm? Well, it's certainly packed full, but I won't call it a tsunami of junk. Don't waste my time about this again, Gina. How? How? Foom! I put it on a 30 second delay. I hate you so much. You look bummed out, Spitzy. What's going on? Is something wrong? <sighs> Besides the toxic halitosis, I feel like my face is melting. Come on, Spitzy. Tell us what's bothering you. Worf. Ever see a love triangle up close, Chad? I have no idea. I don't get it. Why is Spitzy so upset about the dog and cat? That's just not any cat. That's Francis's cat, Pickles. Pickles is Spitzy's girlfriend. Or maybe... I don't know. Is she still your girlfriend or... Oh! Cripes. Wow, Spitzy, that gotta hurt. I mean, another dog stealing pickles away from you. That's tough. You know what's more tough? The other dog's a poodle. <sniffs> Read the room, Chad. You're not going to stand for this, are you, Spitzy? You can't let Pickles drop you for some puffy poodle. Grrr. Get over there and fight for her. Two minutes later. I'd like to say good try, but I just can't. Congratulations, Francis. Your cat just ran off with a poodle and broke Spitzy's heart. Ran off? She didn't run off. Pickles is a flirt, that's all. She'll get tired of that poodle in no time. She'll be back with Spitzy by Monday. Boing! Have you no pride? Poor Sherman. Why poor Sherman? I just feel sorry for him, cooped up in a cage in the social studies room. He's all alone. It's him and a pile of wood shavings. The poor little guy's bored out of his mind. How do you know he's bored? Just look at him, Francis. He barely moves. And when he does move, he's just changing positions to relieve the monotony. Seems pretty boring to me. I mean, what would you call it? Hatha yoga, you pinhead. Now he looks annoyed. I just saw Todd and Susie making out in the library. Yeah, they're an item. So Susie Blaisdell is going out with a Todd Dunphy? I don't believe this. Todd Dunphy! Todd Dunphy! What do you want? And make it fast. I want to get back to Susie's sweet, sweet lips. Gross. Todd, since when are you going out with Susie? Since, um... <laughs> How typical, right? The guy always forgets the anniversary. Babe, when did we start going out? Last Thursday, babe. It's a babe fest. I'm happy for them. Susie, what's the deal with you and Todd? He, you know, doesn't seem like your type. 
He intrigued me. I've dated everyone else. Ahem. Everyone? Everyone of significance. Ouch. Todd Dunphy has a girlfriend. Yes, Todd Dunphy has a girlfriend. You said that. Todd Dunphy has a girlfriend? And I don't! Shocker. I know why you're so shocked that Todd's going out with Susie. It's because of how he looks. The guy's a little chunky and has bad acne, so you can't imagine him having a girlfriend. What? How shallow do you think I am, Francis? I'm not judging Todd based on his looks. I'm judging him because he's a gigantic loser. Oh, okay then. All I'm saying is, Todd and Susie are sort of an odd couple. She's Miss Popularity and he's a math geek. There's a lid for every pot, I guess. Yeah, but all the good lids are taken already. I need a lid and there are no lids to be found. Perhaps your pot is an unusual shape. I mean, at this point, I'd take a piece of tin foil. Woo! That was a blast! Nothing like a good game of mud football. We're pretty filthy, though. You're way dirtier than I am. Go upstairs and jump in the shower. But what will I wear? Just grab something from my closet. You can wear my clothes till my mom washes all our muddy stuff. Where is your mom? Sunday's a shopping day. She's probably at the store. <laughs> or she could be in the living room with all the girls from your sister's scout troop. Could be. What's up? Teddy, how about a little batting practice? Are you crazy? We'll be knee-deep in mud. Not at the field, in the batting cages at pitch and putt. It's too cold. Too cold? It's 60 degrees. What's wrong with you? If you must know, I'm in the middle of a very good Chilling Adventures of Sabrina episode. I can't accept that. Chad, wanna go to the batting cages at Pitch and Pot? No thanks. That place is a rip-off. The machines stink. What are you talking about? Those machines do a perfect strike every time. Not the pitching machines, the snack machines. Baseball, Chad, talking baseball. Two bucks for a bag of wheat thins? I don't think so. Artur, wanna come with me to the batting cages at pitch and putt? I don't think so at baseball. I am not so good. You don't have to bat if you don't want to. You can just watch me bat. I think I will pass. No, no, Arthur. Passing is football. You won't be sorry you came with me, Arthur. You are about to witness a display of hitting like no other. Whiff! Whiff! When you say like no other, what are you meaning? I'm warming up! The machine threw 40 pitches, but you only hit... Okay, okay. You think it's so easy, Artur? You try it. Me? Well, okay. I'll be terrible, probably, but also maybe it will be fun. Oh, how I hate him. Pow! How humiliating! I can only manage a few weak ground balls while Artur is hitting rockets all over the place. This is typical. Artur's so lucky. Everything always goes his way. 
I'm just glad nobody was around to see. Excuse me, young man. I'm a pro baseball scout. Son, you've got one of the sweetest swings I've ever seen. I can't take it. I adore your books. Why, thank you. Will you sign it to Daphne? Of course. Your books are my guilty pleasures. How sweet of you to say. This is your best one yet. You're too kind. Uh, hello? Two, please. Two books? Um, wait. Books? Yes, books. I'm a writer of erotica. Oh, so it wasn't a snack line. But isn't erotica pudding? It bugs me that Arthur is so lucky all the time. Lucky? He's talented, not lucky. Hey, I'm talented too, but I don't get all the breaks he does. But don't worry, I have a plan. I'm not worried. I'm not even interested. Three words. Good luck charm. So you're looking for a good luck charm? Exactly. Why should Arthur have all the luck? Wait a sec. What about those lucky socks you're always talking about? They don't work anymore. I think they've lost their mojo. <coughs> but not their indescribable pungency. C can't breathe. I think this bottle cap just might be the good luck charm I've been searching for. I had it in my pocket during this morning's math test, and I'm pretty sure I aced it. Yeah? What do you put for an answer on question one? Negative twelve. <laughs> the search continues. Here, try this coin as a good luck charm. That's not how it works, Teddy. You don't just decide something's going to bring you luck. It has to prove itself. It has to demonstrate in some way that it's lucky. I'm like Harry Potter. I can't choose the wand. The wand has to choose me. You're comparing yourself to a beloved literary hero with magical powers. So? What have we here? A cap. And a nice one, too. Could this be the good luck charm I've been looking for? Hey, you stole my hat. It didn't look good on you anyway. He's probably got lice. Didi, I found one. A genuine good luck charm. A pencil? Not just any pencil. I found it on the floor of the social studies room. And moments later, when Mrs. Godfrey handed back our tests, guess what happened? You got an A? A C plus? Yep, nailed it. So you did better than expected on a test. That doesn't mean your lucky pencil made it happen. Maybe you're right. A pencil probably doesn't have the power to bring people good fortune. Or does it? A $20 bill! Teddy, I just found 20 bucks thanks to my lucky pencil. It was a coincidence. People find money every day. The pencil had nothing to do with it. Let's put it to the test. Go over there and ask at Belinda Chapman, the captain of the cheer squad. It's supposed to be a lucky pencil, not a miraculous one. Zip it, Francis. Go ahead. Let's see once and for all how lucky that pencil is. Shove. Okay, okay. Um, hi, Belinda. Want to go to a movie with me on Saturday? Sure. Why not? What is happening right now? Pick you up at seven. 
I can't believe you're taking Belinda Chapman to a movie. I'm sold, Nate. Your lucky pencil really is lucky. Hold it, hold it. Are we sure the pencil's responsible? Wait, so now you're doubting the pencil? I'm saying maybe my irresistible sex appeal is... Dude, no. It's the pencil. I just heard Mrs. Godfrey nailed her third period class with a pop quiz. Oh no, we're cooked. No worries, kids. Remember what we've got on our side. Sit down, everyone. It's time for a pop corn party. The lucky pencil strikes again. Does your lucky pencil work only for you? Or will it work for anyone? Nice try, Francis. I'll see what you're up to. You want to steal some of my good luck for yourself? Well, forget it. The pencil is mine. Mine. You're so beautiful. It's like sharing our locker with Gollum. This team is very tall up front, boys, so we'll have to... Coach, relax. There's no need for strategy. All it will take to beat these clowns is a butt-kicking good luck charm. Bring it in, guys. Bring it in. Okay, everybody, touch the pencil. This isn't the pregame speech I had in mind. Wonderful game last night, Nate. Thanks. Harrisville was undefeated. How did you boys manage it? Just lucky, I guess? Sir, Mrs. Godfrey is ill. She won't be in today. Yes, yes! Thank you, Pencil! Thank you! Nice job on your lab report, Nate. Mr. Galvin, can you help me with the worksheet? Certainly, Darcy. Let's start with the equation for... This pen won't work. Nate, let me borrow that pencil. No! Mr. Galvin, here's, um, a different pencil for you to borrow. And I'll take back the one I lent you earlier. Don't be ridiculous. This one is fine. A pencil's a pencil. Snap! Go! Mr. Galvin, don't sharpen that. One earth not. Uh, I'm just saying, here's on the sharp already. Stop it, Nate. You're wearing me down. Uh, and you're wearing down my lucky pencil. <laughs> Mr. Galvin sharpened my lucky pencil down to almost nothing. Oh no! Is it still lucky? No idea. Nate? Belinda? Hi. I don't want to go to the movies with you tomorrow. I must have been temporarily insane when I said yes. That seemed kind of mean. Have a pencil stub. Wow, the outfield's in lousy shape. Look at this gopher hole. Dude, that's dangerous. Someone could break an ankle. You know what we can do? We can cover it up with this extra base from the gear shed there. Now we can shag fly safely. Crack! Trip! Wham! On the bright side, nobody broke an ankle. I'll bet this never happens to Mookie Betts. Here, sign this. What is it? It's an agreement that we won't play tricks on each other on April Fool's Day. How come? Look, every year we put all this effort into pranking each other. But why? We're best friends. We should be pranking people who really deserve it. You know, you're right. I'll sign it. Fst. Ha! Huh? The agreement's for tomorrow, not today. Or didn't he notice? 
Click. I noticed. Well played. Crack. Chunk. Sprawling. Nab. Um. Out. I guess. Best outfield in the league. Sophie's new here, and Principal Nichols asked me to show her around. Sophie, this is Nate. Hi. What's with your hair? Remember when the only thing new kids wanted to know was where the bathrooms are? I just met some new girl, and now she asked me. No. What's with your hair? Can you believe that? I'm not sensing your outrage. What is with your hair? I think that new girl had a point. What's with your hair? I don't know what you mean. Your hair's weird. That's what I mean. On the sides you're bald, but on top those things stick out of your scalp like, like, like pieces of licorice rolled in cat hair. Exactly. I can't take it. Dee Dee, I've got a question for you, and I want you to give me a straight answer. Do you think my hair is, you know, weird? What? No, no, of course. <laughs> I was expecting a more convincing performance from the president of the drama club. Weird? No, hilarious. Yes. Dude, seriously, why does Nate style his hair like that? What do you mean, style his hair? You know, the way he shaves it on the sides and leaves it alone on top? You think he shaves his head? Well, doesn't he? No, his hair's the way it is naturally. If we're styling it, do you honestly think he'd style it that way? Good point. Dad, how come my hair looks like this? It's always looked like that. It's weird. Weird. It's unique. Plenty of people have unusual looks. Your hair's a quirk, like someone having tons of freckles, or an extra finger, or webbed feet. This isn't helping. Nate, uh. Sorry I laughed at your hair yesterday. That was really rude. That's okay, Dee Dee. What can I m do to make it up to you? Can you help me fix my hair? With what? A blowtorch? Ha ha ha! And can you do it right away? How come you're asking me to give you a hair makeover? Because you've got style. Ahem. <clears throat> True. If anyone can fix this mop, you can. So do you want me to cut it or no? No cutting. Just you know, give it a subtle tweak. I don't think subtle is gonna work. How about devil may care? Can you make me a devil may care? You know, I never noticed it before, but your hair is totally symmetrical. Three spikes go off to the left, three more go off to the right, and the little spike in the middle sticks straight up. So what will happen if I just comb them in the directions they seem to want to go in? Swick, 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 swick. Nothing good. You look like a mutant unicorn. Whoa, you're cutting Nate's hair? No, I'm just moving it around. He moved it. All right, pop, 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 but it ended up back in the same neighborhood. My hair has roots in the community. I've decided not to change my hair. It's one of a kind. Why mess with it? If I embrace my hair, everyone else will embrace it too. Hey, porcupine head, eventually. These things take time. If you would have any superpower, what would it be? Super strength. I choose time travel. 
What time travelers of the power? Sure it is. No, it's not, Francis. What about you, Nate? I already have a superpower. Right. I can make myself invisible. If you don't want to answer the question, just say so. Nate, you're in a world of trouble, young man. Where'd he go? I'm going to take a stroll around the hood. Uh, dressed like that? Like what? Like some wannabe hipster. You look ridiculous. The pork pie hat, the vintage bowling shit. Dad, you're trying too hard. Trying to do what? To look cool. To fit in with young, trendy millennials. But trust me, the only people who'll bite into it are your own kind. That's nonsense. My own kind? What does that even mean? Nice shirt. Oh, nice hat. Let's see here. What unholy abomination did my dad pack for me today? Oh, come on! Is he serious? Has he completely lost his mind? How low can the man go? To what revolting depths will he sink? Want to trade lunches? Kwame, want to trade lunches? What do you got? A really delicious ham and Swiss sandwich, barbecue potato chips, and a double fudge brownie. Right. Nice poker face. I may have to resort to begging for scraps. The lunches my dad packs for me are so awful. I may be reduced to asking other kids for scraps. Or orts. Ort is an archaic word that means table scrap. It's not commonly used, but it's a frequent crossword puzzle solution. Doof! Genjo, want to trade lunches? Yes, definitely. Awesome, here. Great, thanks. Want to trade back? Ah, another inedible lunch. Nate, will you shut up? Stop complaining. Whatever your dad made you for lunch, it can't possibly be that bad. Yes, it can. This is what happens when your father's really... Real into broccoli. Chester, want to trade lunches? What do you mean? I give you my lunch and you give me yours. You know, like a business agreement. Here's a better business agreement. You leave me alone and I don't cave in your face. That seems fair. Time once again for Biff and Chip on Safari. Greetings, friends. Join us today as we travel to PS38 in search of nature's most overlooked species, the school secretary. Egad, Biff. There she is. Great Scott. What a magnificent creature. I agree. And don't call me Scott. Why do you say she's overlooked, Biff? Because, Chip, she's taken for granted. Which is ironic, because she's the one who keeps the school running. She does it all, eh? She has to, Chip. Her boss is an incompetent clown. Bonk. And for her tireless devotion to duty, what is her reward? I just threw up in this pot. I hate this job. Oop, I forgot about my guitar lesson. I gotta go. What? We're in the middle of a game. Sorry, we can finish later. But I want to finish now. Well, I guess my protege could take over for me. Protege? Pickles. Wanna play chess? Meow. What's up? 
Nate and Pickles are gonna play chess. No, we're not. You're out of your mind, Francis. I'm not playing chess against some flea bitten cat. Psst. On second thought, it could be a pleasant diversion. Go easy on him, Pickles. This is absurd. I'm playing chess against a cat. I noticed. If anyone sees me, I'll look like a complete idiot. That's so sweet. Playing chess with a cat. Nate, you're adorable. I am rather adorable, aren't I? Oh, brother. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever done. Is there anything more bonkers than playing chess with a cat? RxG5. How about losing to the cat? This can not happen. Uh-oh, Pickles just put me in check. So you're actually going to lose to a cat? I guess so, unless I find a way out of it, like this. Checkmate, fish breath. I'm back. What happened? Nate won. Darn right. I wasn't about to lose to a stinking cat. Order has been maintained. My dignity remains intact. Yep. I agree with the part about order being maintained, but I'm not so sure about the dignity thing. Hey there, fella. How you doing? Good girl. Who's a good girl? I'm going to do this all day. Do what? Whenever we walk around, you insist on petting every dog you see. Yes, Francis, I'm a dog person. In case you haven't noticed, dogs love me. And why do they love me? Because I take the time to give them a little kindness. And it's clear to see what they give me in return. Splurge! Not clear enough. Oh, come on! Ah! I've adjusted my swing so many times. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. No more overthinking. I'm just gonna go by feel. I'm gonna rip it. Pow! Did you see that? It worked! I'm on the green! I'm on the green! The 15th green. You can play through. We'll be here a while. You're so lucky, Sherman. You don't have teachers or tests or homework or stuff like that. Plus, you've got a nice softer bed, fresh water and more food than you can eat. Don't forget the glass walls, Pinhead. He looks mad. Hey, you're not allowed to take Sherman out of his cage. Relax, Gina. What could happen? He could bite you. That's what. Why would he bite me? Ow! Because he wants to run away. Freedom! Ooh, are you in trouble? I'm telling Mrs. Godfrey you let Sherman escape. Wait, what? Why get her all riled up? Just keep quiet until I get Sherman back in his cage. Why should I? Come on, Gina. Do something decent for once. Okay, okay. I suppose I can hold my tongue. For a price. Oh, how I hate her. Okay, I won't tell Mrs. Godfrey that you let Sherman out of his cage, but you owe me. Fine, I owe you. What do you want? Nothing much. Just a favor. One favor. What kind of favor? It could be anything. And I could ask you for it at any time. And you have to say yes. I may be sick. Great. Now, Gina, a favor. But if she doesn't rat me out to Godfrey, it'll be worth it. 
All I have to do is find Sherman before. What on earth are you doing? Go! Nate, what are you up to? Me? Nothing. Not a thing. Then why did you scream Gao yeah, when I came up behind you? What? I didn't. I, uh, I said, yo, ga, yeah, I'm cough really, really into yoga. How holistic. Allow me to demonstrate a cobra pose. For the last time, Nate, why are you on the floor? I, uh, <coughs> I'm looking for something. Mrs. Godfrey, I just noticed Sherman's not in his cage. Oh, really? The jig is up. Nate, did you let Sherman out of his cage? Uh, yeah. Even though there's a rule against doing so. Even though there's a rule against even touching him. Why do I even bother having rules at all? That's what I've always said. Nate, I don't think you understand the implications of letting Sherman escape. Implications? He's hardly the only rodent in the building. The school has mice. The custodian has set traps in every classroom. Traps? Snap! That was the sound of a mouse trap. Oh no! If anything happens to Sherman... Sherman? He's alive! And very, very freaked out. What a relief. The mouse trap snapped, but it didn't catch Sherman. Thanks to my lightning fast reflexes. Here you go, bud, back in your cage. And uh, all's well that ends well, right? For me, yes. For you, probably not. Hi. Mrs. Godfrey gave me two weeks of detention for letting you out of your cage, Sherman. But who cares? I'm just happy you survived. Quite the adventure, huh, buddy? You have something to tell your grandchildren about. Unless my living situation changes significantly, grandchildren are a remote possibility. Hey, hey, what's up? That's what I should be asking you. What do you mean? You need better marketing, that's what I mean. How do you expect people to know what you're selling if you don't have a sign? I do have a sign. What, you mean this? You're proving my point. The letters are so tiny, nobody can read it. You just have to get close enough. Okay, but this is a stupid business plan. Ha ha, what does that mean? Wanna come over and shoot hoops? My dad finally fixed the backboard. Hang on, I'm gonna stop by detention. What do you do? Nothing, I just want to say hi to Mrs. Sheriki. The old gal's always happy to see me. Mrs. Sheriki? Uh, Mrs. Shariki? Oh, hello, Nate. I, uh, just came by to say hello. Well, aren't you nice? And here I am in tears. I'm sorry to make a scene, Nate. I'm just feeling a bit sad. Why? What happened? Matthew is dead. Matthew is dead? Yes, and I'm absolutely shattered. Is he uh, somebody you know? Oh yes, I know him well. Matthew is the leading man in Katrina's Legrand's romance novel, Cascades of Desire. Oh, come on! Honk. Damn, Mrs. Shariki, you had me worried there. I thought somebody real had died, not a character from your cheesy romance novel. He's real to me. Matthew Dupree is a gentleman who treats his lady's love like a precious gem. Unlike some husbands she knows. Unlike some husbands I know. 
Miss Shuriki, isn't it a little strange for you to be crying about a made-up guy? Not at all. It's natural to get attached to fictional characters and to get upset when they pass away. Like that comic book gal that you like. What's her name again? Femi Fatality. Well, what if she died? I'm not listening! So, what, what was so great about this Matthew character? He was down to earth. A lot of leading men in romance novels are British lords or French aristocrats, but not Matthew. He was a humble man with a strong back and a tender heart. He was entirely polluting, he was authentic, and then he was gone. How'd he die? Hot air balloon accident. The smartest student I've ever had? You might expect me to say Artur or Gina or one of those egghead kids, but no, it's Nate. The boy's a genius, but he's so defined. It's easy to overlook his brilliance. Yep, the kid does things his way. He doesn't play by the rules. The world needs mavericks like Nate. That's why I secretly recruited him to the CIA. Mr. Rosa, what do you mean? The name's not Rosa. I can't tell you my real name. All I can tell you is that Nate Wright is one of our most valuable agents. He's on the job 24-7. So if he occasionally doesn't finish his homework, now you know why. He has more important things to do. So you don't have time to do your homework, but you do have time to draw a comic strip about why you didn't do your homework? That's classified. Peter, my boy, what are you doing here? Your mom asked me to hang out with you while she runs some errands. Well, she's washing her money. I don't need anyone to entertain me. I entertain myself by reading. She knows that. She hired me as protection, not entertainment. Protection? Yeah, let's say I'm a bad guy who's just broken into your house. What can a first grader do in that situation? Wham! He can follow the directions in the book he's reading. Self-defense for tots? Guys, do you know any couples who are thinking of breaking up? What does that have to do with anything? I'm trying to build a client list. My card. Nate Wright, couples counsellor. A couples counsellor? You? Yup. If you know anybody, I'm taking referrals. Referrals? Can I refer you to as a pinhead? Zip it, scrub. You said you were a I did. Hey, why didn't you tell... Ben, Cassie, settle down. Get lost, Nate. This is none of your business. But it is. Nate Wright, couples counselor, at your service. I have keen insights into people's personalities. I understand human nature. I'm a good communicator. What makes you a good communi... I listen. Stop interrupting. Okay, kids. Let's start our first session. What's the problem with your relationship? Cassie acts different around her friends than she does with me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Ben's sense of humor is sort of cheesy. Plus, he has bad breath. Wait, what? It's called tough love, dude. Have a tic-tac. Becky. Will, want to try couples therapy? Us? Why would we? Yeah, we're happy together. That's sweet. Misguided, but sweet. Um, what's misguided about it? Step into my office. In the final analysis, no outsider can fix your relationship. That's up to you. Look inside yourselves. That's where you'll find all the answers. So, you have no advice for us? Nope. 
Then why did he charge us five dollars? I forgot my lunch money. Next! Allow me to use a sports analogy to describe your relationship. Shane, you're like the San Diego Padres. You're never as compelling as people think you should be. Zoe, you're like the Baltimore Orioles. You were great once, but you're in the middle of a long, sad decline. Nobody appreciates old-fashioned scouting reports anymore. Couples therapy. Okay, Nikki and Trevor, you say on your intake form that you really like each other, but that you don't have much in common. Please elaborate. Well, I like dogs, ginger ale, Spider-Man, Snickers, bars, the Yankees, blue and peppermint. And I like cats, root beer, Batman, Reese's, Peanut butter cups, the red socks, green and spearmint. Okay, here's the deal. Dogs are better than cats, Spider-Man's better than Batman, and blue is better than green. On the other hand, root beer is better than ginger ale, Reese's are better than Snickers, the red socks are better than the Yankees, and spearmint's better than peppermint. Nikki wins 4-3. I thought there weren't any winners in couples therapy. Just the counsellor. Here's my bill. Gina's driving me crazy. How come? I owe her a favour because she didn't rat me out when I let Sherman out of his cage. What's the favour? That's what's making me nuts. She hasn't told me yet. She could spring it on me any time. And you have to say yes. I know. Oh, Nate. I've decided what favor I want you to do for me. Finally. Well, what is it? Tell me. Let's get this over with. Come on. Tell me. Tell me. Actually, I'm going to think about it some more. Go! All right, Gina. Enough is enough. You can't keep torturing me like this. Tell me right now what favor I have to do for you, or I'm declaring our agreement null and void. Okay, okay. The favor I want is... For you to be nice to me for one week. That's the favor you want? For me to be nice to you? That's it. Wow. I was sure you were going to hammer me with something. But it doesn't sound so tough to be nice to each other. This is I'm going to be nice to you. Oh no. So all you have to do is be nice to her. It's not as easy as it sounds. I want him to be nice for real, not fake nice. What? I'm never fake nice. Prove it. Uh, hi there. Phony as a three dollar bill. Okay, so you've got to be nice to me. Starting now. Great. And you have to keep it going for a whole week. Fantastic. And every time you're not nice to me, I get to add a day. What? Why? You... Yes, you completely reasonable person who I don't hate with every fiber of my being. This situation with you and Gina is highly entertaining. I mean, you being nice to her after hating her for so long, it's great. Yeah, it's like a cheesy TV movie. And the ending is, after a week of being nice to her, you realize you've been secretly in love with her the whole time.
Where is the empathy? Hi, Gina. How are you? Nope, not nice enough. What? You agree to be nice to me. That means smiling, not frowning. Hi, Gina. How are you? Much better. That took every ounce of strength I had. Oop, my shoelace is untied. Will you tie it, please? What? Listen, Gina. Just because I have to be nice to you for a week doesn't make me a servant. I didn't tell you to tie it. I asked you nicely. So you have to be nice in return. I like a double knot. I am about to snap. Forget it, Gina. This is the last straw. I've been nice to you all week, but I draw the line at tying your stinking shoe. Zing, clonk, ow! What's going on here? Whose shoe is this? It hit me in the head. Hey, don't look at me. My shoes are on my feet where they belong. The person you're looking for is someone who's missing a shoe. Oh, look here. Gina, is this your shoe? Yes, but I didn't throw it. Nate did. He was supposed to tie it, but what on earth was Nate tying your shoe? Have you suddenly become incapable of tying your own shoe? Explain, Gina. Yes, Gina, explain. Now let's see if I understand this. Nate owed you a favor. Yes, the favor was he had to be nice to me. And was he? He tried. Then why didn't you show him the same curtsy? Gina, you didn't ask Nate to tie your shoe out of genuine need, did you? I, uh, well, you did it to belittle him. But he is the one who threw my shoe in class. Yes, and there will be consequences for his behavior and for yours. Yes! Nate, what happened in there? Did Godfrey nail you? Yup, she gave me two detentions for throwing a shoe. Why are you happy about Mrs. Godfrey giving you two detentions? She gave Gina five. I'll never get into Harvard. Back again, Nate? Affirmative, Mrs. Cherokee, but I'm not alone. I'm joined today in detention by renowned teacher's pet and president of the honor society, Gina. Pretty shocking, huh? Quite the change from the usual losers and psychos who are here every day. No offense, guys. That's cold, man. Nate, why are you here? I threw a shoe in social studies. Threw shoe. And Gina, why are you here? Because for the briefest of moments, I allowed myself to get dragged down into the gutter of his miserable, morally bankrupt existence. That won't fit on the form, dear. Just try general weaselness. Detention is such a waste of time. I can't believe you sit here for an hour every day doing nothing. I don't do nothing, Gina. I draw on the desk. Why aren't I surprised? But you can't tell they're my drawings because I signed them anonymous. Oops. My bad. Oof. Right next to the Nelson's dog. Grrr. That much vicious, dude. Wait here. I've got a plan. Your plan is a Garfield puppet? It's a distraction. Any self-respecting dog will attack a cat. It's just what dogs do. 
I toss this in there and while fighter rips it to shreds, I grab our baseball. Zing! Good plan. Whatever works. Meow, meow. Tomorrow's the last day of school, Gramps. Ah, oh, prank day. Wait, you know about prank day? Do I? I was a prank day master. I once hid a dozen rotten eggs all over Mr. Fitz's woodshop. <laughs> it absolutely reeked. Did he know it was you? I think so, but what could he do? I was about to graduate. So he never got you back? No, he did not. Splat! Until today. You've got to admire his persistence. Last day of school. Prank day. Hey, I've already pulled off my best prank ever, getting Gina sent to detention. But you're still gonna do other pranks, right? Well, I can't possibly top the Gina thing. The floor in the teacher's lounge is covered with six inches of tomato sauce. Slosh, slosh, or can you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Last day of school. Prank day. Time to walk the hallways and let them know there'll be no pranks on my watch. Attention, students. <laughs> I pumped helium into his office. So it's prank day again, is it? Every year it's the same thing. You juvenile delinquents get your jollies by making teachers the butt of your lame jokes. Well, not this time, my friends. I'm watching all of you like a hee <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> How did you? Heat activated fabric paint. This is awful. What's awful? Someone posted a video on the school website entitled Yeti, Beast of the Himalayas. So, it's a video of Mrs. Godfrey on last fall's field trip to Mount Nicknack. Have you ever heard of such a thing? I can neither confirm or nor deny that. <laughs> I'm the king of prank day. I just put salt in Mr. Galvin's coffee while he wasn't looking. Hmm. I locked a family of skunks in Mrs. Godfrey's minivan. You what? But hey, your thing was good too. So long, Mr. Rosa. Have a good summer. You too, Nate. And... <laughs> Thanks for not playing any pranks on me. Uh, right, yeah, no problem. Guys, you're right, he's clueless. Celebrity interview with your host, Chip Chipson. Greetings, folks. My guest today is that lovable ball of flaming gas, the sun. Son, you're looking hot. You're too kind, Chip. What's new, bro? Not me, that's for sure. I'm 4.6 billion years old. Wow, you don't look a day over 3 billion. Well, bringing light to the world keeps me young, Chip. But is there a downside to your shining rays? <laughs> yes, it's true. You sunblock, everybody. And above all, never look directly at me. Why? What would happen? Well, Chip, let me explain. The sun got in my eyes. Again? Ah, the 4th of July fair. Remember how I met Trudy here last year? I do seem to recall that. Yes, 
Maybe history will repeat itself. Maybe I'll meet my future girlfriend today at the fair. You never know who might be just around the corner. Oh, uh, hi, Kim. I need a partner to ride the death spiral with me. Chester doesn't like going on wild rides, so he told me to find someone else. Oh, what a shame. I happen to have an appointment with the balloon sculptor in five minutes. Nobody makes appointments with the balloon sculptures, dude. Shut up. You'll do. Come on, we're riding on the death spiral. No, I'm not riding the death spiral with you. I understand. You're scared, not of the ride, but of the simmering romantic tension between us. No, I'm not. I'll try to keep my sex appeal on low. Two, please. No, no, no. I'm not going on this ride with you, Kim. It is not happening. Okay, Slugger, I hear you. Some rides are too intense for delicate kids. Delicate? Why don't you try the tiny tot teacups? That was a good ride. <laughs> You're leaning against me the whole time. I couldn't help it. It was a... What's that force where something's pushing you in a direction you can't resist? Lost. No! <laughs> Look who's back. I was riding the dead spiral with Kim. Awful. I want to erase all memories of this experience and start fresh. You need a palate cleanser. Yes, good idea. A plate cleanser. Give me two chili dogs, a pretzel and a chocolate milkshake. Greetings, old bean. What's with the outfit, Sherlock? I'm working on a case, obviously. What kind of case? Counterfeiting. There are bogus bills all over the neighborhood. What? So I might have money that isn't genuine? Let's find out. Take out your wallet. I'll use my deductive skills to determine if this $5 bill is good or phony. It was good. Ah! Ah! Uh, ah! You stinking clouds! Don't you love quiet days at the beach? I won't know. Why would anyone name a candy Milk Duds? Milk Duds? When something's a dud, it's a flop, right? So why would you use dud for a candy? Why? Why? These are the deep questions we don't have time to ponder during the school year. It makes no sense. The perfect day. The perfect snack. Squawk! The perfect crime. You filthy scarlet! Tower 2 to Tower 3. Anything going on there? Negative, Tower 2. No warnings, no water rescues, no lost kids, no situations of any kind. A seagull just stole my hot dog. What are you going to do about it? Actually, Tower 2, let me get back to you. And don't tell me th that's not your jurisdiction. There's Fiona. I'm going to go talk to her. But she's with her grandfather. He's her gatekeeper, dude. He won't let you near her. Sure he will. I'll just butter him up. As simple as that. It isn't brain surgery. Maybe it should be. Sir, allow me to tell you that's a stunning set of dentures. 
Ooh, there's a cute girl. Yeah, but greetings, my lady. What are you doing on this beautiful day? Hanging out with my boyfriend. Was that really necessary? You're bad at this. Scream! Stop! Hold it! Don't throw that away. There's treasure in there. Gotta find them. Gotta find them. Where are they? Where are they? Yes! Here they are! My lucky socks! Can you believe my idiot father tried to toss these out? He knows they're my most prized possessions. Where's the respect? Where's the common courtesy? Okay, carry on. I hate this job. Hi, Miranda. This is my friend Jamal. We're spies. That's nice. And you know who we're spying on? You! We're going to follow you around all day and expose your dirty little secrets. What a fun game. So far you're boring, but we can wait. Spies are patient. Listen guys, get lost. I don't want to play spies. You're not playing spies. We are. The person getting spied on can't say he doesn't want to play. That's not how the game works. Like I told you, he's not very bright. You weren't kidding. How come you little monsters chose me to spy on? You're a person of interest. Based on your file, we decided surveillance was warranted. My file? Give me that. You wrote he's bad in crayon on a Hello Kitty notepad. Yup, nailed the profile. Look, Miranda, I don't want you and Jamal following me around. Just pretend we're not here. Maybe I could if you were any good at spying. Spies are supposed to stay hidden. But you two aren't hidden at all. How do I pretend you're not here if you're right next to me? The key word is pretend, Pinhead. The pressure's getting to him. This is fun. We're good at spying. Oh, really? If you're such good spies, tell me what you've discovered by following me around all day. You're afraid of cats and you have a blister on your left foot. And you think that girl, Mallory, is really, really cute. That's actually pretty impressive. She doesn't think you're cute though. Yeah, so dream on. I just thought of something. You guys are spying on me. I know you're spying on me. If spies on secret, it sort of defeats the whole purpose. Okay, we won't be spies anymore. We'll just be annoying first graders following you around. Yay! <clears throat> You're Mr. Rosa, right? I'm Todd Mayhew. You are my middle school art teacher. Ah, Todd, hello. So you're scooping ice cream now. <laughs> Interesting career move. Well, it pays the bills. I used to work in a place like this when I was a kid. Worst job ever. Fortunately, I work for myself now. And business is booming. See that Porsche convertible out there? Paid for it in cash. Very nice. Yep. Brand new. It's a pretty sweet ride. Keep on scooping, man. <laughs> Don't work too hard. Can I have another milkshake, Mr. Rosa? I spilled my first one. On the front seat of that guy's car. Yeah! I'm up next. What are my numbers against this guy? Let's see. 
between last season and this, you faced him 23 times. He struck you at 23 times. You haven't had so much as a foul ball. A more positive person would have said, you're due. I'm a statistician, not a cheerleader. Go get him, Nate. Thanks, Chad. I've got a funny feeling you're going to hit a home run. A funny feeling? <sniffs> Bad lot of good that'll do me. Pow! Did you guys see that? What a shot! Way to go, Nate! And Chad called it. He said I was going to hit a homer, and I did. I just had a tingly feeling, that's all. It is like a cross between a gas bubble and a sugar buzz. Does this mean I'm psychic? Either that, or you had one too many pre-game brownies. I'm up this inning, Chad. Getting any psychic vibes about what's going to happen? Um... I think you might get a hit, or you might pop out or strike out. You might walk too, or you could get hit by a pitch, or reach base on an error. That pretty much covers everything, Chad. I'm new at this. I'm up again, Chad. Am I gonna hit another home run? Um, I see on first base, you st Steal second, then you steal third, then you tagged out trying to steal home, but it's okay because you resolved the conflict you'd been having with your sister, who for some reason is coaching the team. That's an episode of The Simpsons, Chad. It is? <laughs> Whoops! I don't think you actually have psychic abilities, Chad. When you said you had a feeling Nate would hit a home run, you're probably just trying to pump him up. It only seemed like a psychic event because of how unlikely it was. Unlikely? Miraculous. Whatever. Here comes the scary part. I feel it. I can't look. Think they're going into the basement. I know they are. Don't do it. Don't do it! They're doing it! The stairs are so creaky! This house is totally haunted! Turn around! Go back! It's too late, Chad. It's so dark. They're about to turn on the lights. Click! Yeah! HGTV. That looks like asbestos, Cindy. Oh no! I wanted to make this a playroom! Well, hi there, sweetie. What's new? Just hoping to earn some money. Do you and Gramps have any chores that need doing? Sure. You can help your Uncle Ted. He's in the backyard. Gramps thinks you're weeding the garden. I'm getting into the proper mindset. Uncle Ted, you're supposed to be helping me weed the garden. I object to the very idea of weeding. Why should a tulip be allowed to thrive while a dandelion is torn from the soil? I can't make those decisions. Are you qualified to say which plant should live and which should die? No. I don't know a vegetable when I see one. That was savage. What does mankind have such an overriding obsession with cultivating things? Instead of weeding and pruning and mowing, we should leave things to flourish or fail on their own. Things shouldn't be changed to suit our aesthetics. They should be left alone to grow as nature intended. In what do you manscape your back hair? That, my boy, is a hygiene issue. This sort of menial work is beneath me. Then why don't you get a job? It's not so easy, my dear nephew. The job market doesn't value my specialized skills. What are your skills? <laughs> well, this could take a while.
Not counting video games and Avengers trivia. Oh then, never mind. You know why I have no job? Because I have to be passionate about my work. That's why I'm planning to start my own Star Wars podcast. Aren't there already a zillion Star Wars podcasts? Yes, but not seen from my unique perspective. The perspective of a 40-year-old fanboy who lives in his parents' basement? Not a fanboy, a scholar. Mother, you are paying young Nate here five dollars an hour to weed the garden. For performing the very same task, I am being paid nothing. I clean your room, cook your meals and wash your clothes. You call that nothing? Cram just dunked on you, dude. Once again, labor is crushed under the boot of management. Mine smack. How come the center fielder gets to be the captain of the outfield? Just because Teddy plays center, he catches way more balls than I do. At least once a game, he catches a ball that should have been mine. It's not fair. Crack! Ah, uh, this one's right at me. No way Teddy's catching this ball. Wait, did he just say something? Bonk! Mine. Spitzy! Spitzy? I was expecting on the Garfield posters with the Harry and Meghan commemorative plates surprised me a little. Hey Nate, have you seen Pickles? Pickles? Why would I be looking for your cat, Francis? I'm busy trying to find Spitzy. Spitz is missing too? Well, it's obvious then. Don't you see what's happened? Those two crazy kids have eloped. Oh, brother. What makes you think Spitzy and Pickles eloped? Because they're already engaged. Clearly, getting married is the next step. Plus, I think they've been discussing a honeymoon. I found these under Pickles' bed. Visit fabulous Las Vegas. I hope they take pictures. I still can't believe Pickles and Spitzy eloped. We don't even know they did elope. Of course they eloped. What other explanation could there be? They're a dog and a cat, so maybe a nap? I pity your lack of romantic imagination. Why are we at City Hall to do some detective work? If Pickles and Spitzy did elope, maybe they came here for a marriage license. Hi, I have a question about a cat and a dog. Wrong window, son. This is marriage licenses. Yes, I know. I'm going to wait in the parking lot. Spitzy! Pickles! Did you two elope? Are you married? Meow! 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 Rawr! Rawr! Meow! Oh, they didn't elope after all. They went to Purse and Poses Cat Yoga. This may be the stupidest day of my entire life. Yeah? Hi, mister. I'm Nate Wright from Timberscat Troop 3. What are you selling? That's the beauty part, sir. Absolutely nothing. Here's the thing. School starts in a few weeks, which means you'll be swamped with kids ringing your doorbell and asking for money. Every team, club and band will be coming to you with their hands out. But not me. Just give me ten bucks today and I won't have to visit you this fall. So I pay you now and you leave me alone? Exactly. I see we are speaking the same language. That's... 
extortion slam we're speaking the same language but you have a more extensive vocabulary